Recently, eagle-eyed netizens revealed that the photo of a customer service representative on the Apple official website's Apple Watch Specialist one-on-one -on -one selection page was suspected of insulting China. This revelation immediately triggered dissatisfaction among netizens towards Apple. One representative comment reads, We've shed the braids a hundred years ago, and now they come to humiliate us. What's Apple's intention? The main issue here revolves around the braids. In American culture, there are a few stereotypes about Chinese people, small eyes, long braids, flat noses, pointed nails, and wearing small round hats. The root of the problem can be traced back to the discovery of gold in California in 1848. During that time, a large number of Chinese labors traveled across the ocean to the United States for work. They were efficient and demanded lower wages, causing many local white workers to lose their jobs. Fearing that these yellow-skinned individuals would disrupt their ethnic development, they joined forces with the media to vilify Chinese people. They attacked Chinese labors for their customs like long braids, smoking opium, gambling, leading to the implementation of anti-Chinese laws. The image of Chinese people with long braids is not uncommon in American history, appearing in movies, cartoons, and posters. One of the most iconic representations is Fu Manchu, a sinister and cunning image of a Chinese person from the late Qing dynasty, haunting the nightmares of several generations of Westerners over time. Braids and slanted eyes have become symbolic features of insulting China. It is indeed a sensitive area, and any overseas portrayal involving these elements tends to evoke strong resentment among Chinese people. However, media verification has confirmed that the Apple employee in question is not of Chinese descent but is, in fact, a Native American. Native Americans share some genetic similarities with East Asians, hence the facial resemblance. Moreover, braided hairstyles are quite common among Native Americans. Additionally, the braided customer service is not exclusive to the Apple China website. It is also featured on Apple's official websites in the United States, Japan, South Korea, and other countries. Some netizens have pointed out that merely changing the language without changing the region is ineffective, as there are different customer service images for the Japanese and French regions currently. There are various opinions within China regarding Apple's braided customer service image, roughly falling into four categories. One overly sensitive. Unnecessary reaction point two inappropriate for Apple to use this image point three wait for further developments before commenting. Point for not concerned, no comment for those watching the video. Which category do you belong to? Please leave your opinions in the comments section. Actually, Apple has always been attentive to racial issues. On their official website, whenever there are portraits, they typically feature individuals of African, Asian, and Latin American descent. Generally, major global companies have cross-cultural communication teams to review content. However, in this instance with the image of a Native American, Apple seems to have overlooked the potential sensitivity for Chinese people, despite China being Apple's largest overseas market. Speaking of which, many netizens may have the impression that Chinese people seem particularly prone to feeling offended. Doing business in China, a slight oversight can hit the nerve of the Chinese. For examples on July 11th, in the store distribution information on the official website of the jewelry brand Vulgari, Taiwan was seemingly listed separately, leading to backlash and trending on social media. Around 8 p.m. that evening, Vulgari issued a statement on their official Weibo, acknowledging a mapping error due to managerial negligence on their overseas website, which they promptly corrected. The first sentence of the statement emphasized Vulgari's a firm stance in respecting China's sovereignty and territorial integrity. As always, however, the controversy did not subside. Chinese netizens felt that Vulgari only issued a statement on China's domestic Weibo, remaining silent on foreign platforms, deeming it as perfunctory. Even People's Daily began calling on Vulgari to apologize, don't turn it into a mainland China exclusive matter. This is not the first time fashion and luxury brands have stumbled on Chinese territorial issues. Similar problems with luxury brands were exposed in a concentrated manner between 2018 and 2019. In 2018, a t-shirt from the fast fashion brand Gap was suspected of extensively altering the map of China, leading to a consumer boycott. Ultimately, Gap resolved the issue by issuing an apology and destroying the products.in 2019. 
numerous international luxury brands were exposed for not respecting Chinese territorial issues. Brands like Versace, Givenchy, Coach, and others were exposed for t-shirts that equated Hong Kong and Macau with the names of countries. Subsequently, brands like Estee Lauder, Calvin Klein, MAC, and others faced similar issues. For a while, there was a trend of brand ambassadors and brands terminating contracts in succession. From the earlier Dolce and Gabbana incident to the later Xinjiang cotton issue, some brands have already tasted the bitter consequences. After the Dolce and Gabbana incident, the brand has remained essentially transparent in the Chinese market. In the Xinjiang cotton incident, brands like H&M faced consumer boycotts for a long time, with sparse foot traffic and numerous closures. Apart from H&M, Adidas, Nike, Uniqlo, Under Armour, Zara, and other brands were exposed for having issued statements boycotting Xinjiang cotton, not respecting China's sovereignty and territorial integrity, and attempting to divide China, all of which led to consumer boycotts. In fact, over the past few years, many foreign brands have been involved in incidents that seem to insult China. Some were due to a lack of understanding of China's situation, while others appeared deliberate. Insufficient understanding of China's culture, coupled with the inadequate connection between the outside world and China's development, has led to misunderstandings for those unfamiliar with Chinese culture. Perhaps, we need to showcase the evolving China comprehensively, allowing more people to understand the present-day China, to eliminate stereotypical impressions from the outside world, but at the same time, among Chinese people, especially the younger generation, there is a sentiment that it's unnecessary. Their reasoning is, no one likes overly sensitive individuals. Are Chinese people really overly sensitive? Many netizens have also shared their opinions. One netizen stated, I don't think Chinese people are very sensitive to insults. I've been abroad for 11 years, and in my view, Chinese people are quite slow to react to intentional or unintentional insults from others. Many things that Chinese people don't care about would likely lead to diplomatic protests in other countries. I live in Uruguay, and there's a tourist area called East Cape. One year, they held a tourism event with the UK, and British flags were displayed on the streets. Argentina immediately protested, saying that a certain percentage of the tourists in this tourist area are Argentinians. And displaying the British flag is an insult to us due to an ongoing dispute over an island occupied by the UK. This demand might seem unreasonable to us Chinese, but internationally, it can be understood. So, Uruguay removed all the British flags. Another time, Uruguay hosted an international agricultural expo, and the UK participated, bringing an antique artillery battery for display. Argentina, seeing this, protested again, saying that since Argentina is also participating in the expo, having a British artillery battery is an attempt to humiliate us. As a result, the artillery battery was also removed. These are events from the past two years, Chinese people probably wouldn't even think about such things. Why would someone protest against hanging the flag of a legally recognized country on my own street, or displaying an antique artillery battery at an expo? But internationally, everyone actually cares, and they take such matters seriously. In comparison, Chinese people are more sluggish in their reactions rather than overly sensitive whether it's sensitivity or not. The interpretation of Eastern cultures by Westerners always gives off a malicious vibe, reminiscent of some evil and backward witchcraft, suggesting a lack of civilization, barbarism, and backwardness. They don't understand or bother to verify Chinese culture, instead arrogantly following their instincts. Even documentaries from National Geographic in the United States are like this. Most introductions to China contain errors, with incorrect emperor names and timelines. These easily verifiable facts are often incorrect, this may be the source of what's perceived as sensitivity. This kind of ignorant and arrogant interpretation of Eastern culture is indeed infuriating. The only solution is to deepen mutual understanding, and perhaps our videos can contribute to that. Feel free to like and share our program. See you next time.